All right, my name is Syed Hashimi. I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio web team. And today we're going to be talking about publishing ASP.NET applications to the cloud with Visual Studio 2012. Um, and we're actually going to be talking about 2010 because everything that I'm going to show you today from the web publishing perspective is available not only for Visual Studio 2012, but also for Visual Studio 2010. Before we get into uh, all the features, let me show you where can you get the latest, uh, the latest bits. Okay, so you'll go to windowsazure.com and then click on develop, and then from there click on .NET, and then you'll see the big blue install icon, and then after that, it'll prompt you whether you want to get the bits for 2010 or for 2012. Okay, so the first project that I'm going to show you is an Entity Framework Code Forest application. It's a simple contact manager project. And um, I've already got some migrations created. We can see the, uh, the migrations here. I'll show you my model first. Uh, so this is a contact manager project. So what I did, I created a model, uh, a contact class. And then from there, I created a controller, the home controller in this case. Um, I scaffolded this controller with the add new MVC controller dialog, and then scaffolding it with MVC with Entity Framework. So this controller was automatically created, as well as all the views for the create, read, update, and delete operations. And then after that, I also created some, uh, some migrations here that is required for Entity Framework Code First. Uh, we don't have time to get into how to create all the migrations, uh, but we do have a really great walkthrough at windowsazure.com showing you all these steps that are needed uh, to basically replicate exactly what I'm doing here. Let me go ahead and run this application locally, and then we'll publish it out and see the, uh, see the result. Okay, so now we've got the application up and running locally. I've already created a couple rows. I'll go ahead and create another one. We'll create one for Mohit. Okay, so create new. We can see that the contact manager is working locally. And now I'm ready to publish this to windowsazure.com. I've already signed into the portal, and from here we need to create a new website. So I'll do that from the command bar, which is at the bottom left. So when you're creating websites, you have three options of how to create a website. You can do Quick Create, which will just create the website by itself. It'll be an empty website. You can do Create with Database. That will create an empty database. Uh, it will create an empty website, as well as a SQL database, and then link them together. And you can also do from gallery. For this example, I'll show you create with database. I'm going to give my application a name. So Syed CM. I'll select create new SQL database. And I'll also choose to create a new database server. Now I need to uh, give some credentials for the admin user. This will go ahead and create my Windows Azure website, as well as my SQL database. And after this, I'll download the published profile and then use that in Visual Studio in order to publish my site. So we can see that my website has been created. And in the right-hand side, under the quick glance, I can download the published profile. I'll go ahead and save that into my downloads folder. And then open up Visual Studio, and I'll right click and say Publish. This will bring us the new Publish dialog. From here, you can see that we can now import these published profiles. So I'll choose the published profile, which I just downloaded. We can say Next. On this tab, we can see that 
all the databases that exist in my project are automatically detected and shown on the publishing dialog. In this case, it has picked up my EF code first context, which is contact context, and the connection string, which was inside the published profile that I downloaded, is automatically mapped to this. And there's two checkboxes. The first one, you use this connection string at runtime, is automatically checked. That checkbox uh, will make sure that the connection string that's in this text box is inserted into the web config during publish. And then the second checkbox, execute code first migrations, this is what will enable my database schema to evolve as my application does. So when you check this, it will make sure that your, the migrations initializers are executed the first time that your context is uh, accessed. And this application is not uh, actually using this default connection, so I'll just leave that as it is. Go to the, uh, the next tab. From here, we can see we have a preview experience. I'll click Start Preview. Uh, this will contact the server and then calculate the difference or calculate the file operations which will be performed. In this case, since I've never published this application before, we can see that all the values for the action column are set to add. The other options here are update and delete. I'll go ahead and click publish here. When the application is finished publishing, it will automatically launch a browser. It should just be another few seconds, and it's done. Uh, it's been launched, and this is where my context is getting access for the first time. So it will detect that there's pending migrations and then execute them, okay? All right, so that whole process has now been completed. And then I'll click on uh, Create New. Uh, create a new entry here. Okay, and click Create here. At this point, we can see now um, that I've published my application. It's got a database with it, and um, we're now storing all the data. If I needed to make any changes to my model, I would just add a migration with it. And then next time you publish your application and then access the context, your migrations will be executed to update your database. And, um, and that's it. So uh, with EF Code First, it's actually a really great experience uh, publishing to Windows Azure. And um, now I'll show you what is the support that we've built for databases that are non-code first. Okay, so I've got a project here. It's called Contoso University. I'll run this app so you can see uh, what is the behavior of this application. Okay, it's a uh, fictitious university. I can drill into the students, also the courses, and uh, the instructors as well. Okay. In this case, I'm going to right-click and say Publish. I'm going to follow a very similar flow to what I had before. But actually, before I get there, let me show you what does my web config look like, look like for this project. So inside web config, we have two connection strings. One is uh, schools entities. This is an entity framework, EDMX style connection string. So if I scroll over to the right, you can see that we've got the inner connection string, which is contained inside uh, this connection string. This is pointing to local DB with the initial catalog of Contoso U. And then if I take a look at my membership connection string, we can see that that's pointing to the same database. Okay, I'm going to right click and say publish on Contoso University. I'll import a publish settings file here. Okay, we can click on validate connection to make sure that I've got all my web deploy properties set up right. In this example, I'm just publishing to localhost because Windows Azure doesn't have all the bits uh, set up, but by the time this video is published, it will. Okay, so now I've gone to the, uh, the settings tab, and here we can see that it has detected all, both of the connection strings that are in my web config. And then I can click update database here. Since both of these entries point back to the same database, 
I'm not going to choose update database for the second entry. Uh, I could if I wanted to. It would just kind of uh, do the same thing twice. So we've already taken a look at the file preview experience, but now I can also uh, preview the database that will be published. So I just clicked preview database. Let me explain what's the process that's followed, uh, not only for preview, but also for publish for this type of database. So what we do is when you publish or preview, we'll generate a DAC pack from the connection string that is inside webconfig. The DAC pack is a full database representation of your database schema. And we'll take the DAC pack and send it to the remote web deploy endpoint. At that point, it'll compare the target database with the schema that's contained inside the DAC pack figure out any differences, and then execute those differences. That entire operation was performed when I clicked Preview. Uh, let me scroll down so you can take a look at the result. In this case, I'm publishing to a database that doesn't exist. So you can see I've got a create database statement. And then if I scroll down, we'll see a bunch of create table uh, statements as well. OK, create table. Let me go ahead and click Publish here. Okay. And um, just like before, when the publish is successfully completed, we will automatically launch the, the browser to the particular URL. My application has come up. The about, I'm going to students, we can see that um, I don't have any data here because we just uh, published out the schema. But now, what I'll do is I have a, a script which has some data inside of it. And let me show you what's that. So I'll right click Publish again, uh, go back to the Settings tab, choose Configure Database Updates, and then I'll go to Add SQL Script, and then just add the script. OK? Let me, um, I'll click Preview here. And sh first, I'll show you the script. So this just um, it's kind of a dummy script that inserts data into the just a few different tables that I have. Uh, okay. In this case, I'm just deleting the previous values. You know, in your case, you'd, you're probably not going to want to do that. Okay. So I went back to uh, click on the schema update part. So now I haven't made any changes to my model. So I'm expecting that this script doesn't have any actual uh, database operations inside of it. So this is a, essentially a, a no-op. And also, I can preview the files. Uh, there wasn't any changes to the files. We can see uh, that the web config will show up. This is, uh, this is normal because we automatically parameterize those, those files. And let me click Publish here. OK, cool. Now, if I go to Students, and then Courses, and Instructors, you can see that I've got an application which has all my data. Uh, it was very easy to automate publishing to it. Uh, this is just a small set of features which we have added to the web publishing. There's a bunch more. Um, but you know, definitely do keep an eye out for us and take an eye out on our blogs. And it was really great uh, showing you guys these features. And I hope you liked this video. And I'm Syed. Thank you.